Aloha guys, today I'm going to show you how to trim and shoe a foot that is flat and thin. We're going to go over the process of how to map this foot and conduct a corrective trim and so that we can place the shoe in an optimum spot that will reduce flaring and create more growth. To start things off, you want to locate the dimple of your frog which is located at the very back and you want to find your central sulcus. Now, finding your central sulcus and finding your dimple is so important because it helps you determine what the true length of your frog is because you will take that central sulcus length and times it by two. Right here, I'm just trying to find the true apex of my frog and also locate my vertical depth so I know how much thickness I've got. I'm also knifing out any high spots that I find around the termination of the bars that could put pressure on your navicular bursa. And so right here, I'm just trying to expose all of the uh, vertical depth that I have so I can get a true read on this foot. Now, one of the things that is very beneficial is, is mapping out the curvature of your bars. Um, usually, the more curvature there is, the more distortion and height there is, therefore um, signifying your medial lateral imbalance. So now that we got a true read on the apex of our frog, exposed our vertical depth, exposed the distortion in our, our bars, I'm gently rasping away that, that height on the distorted heel determined by that distorted bar. And now I'm taking my nippers and gently peeling away chalky layers of sole to get a true read on my sole dip and to make a reasonable nip where I won't make the horse um, short and sore. Here, I'm just taking the, the edge of my blade and gently just working it back from about a half inch away from the white line and just getting in there and peeling away the layers of chalky sole. Now you can see that the uh, wall height has been exposed. I kind of have a true read and, and, and sight on my vertical dip. I kind of determined that there's not much I can take off and do, so I just took my, my rasp and gently rasp down to the waxy part of the sole, which is basically going to be my stopping point from here on out. I'm fluctuating between the smooth side and rough side of my rasp, mainly because the rough side is the more, more aggressive and you can get pretty short really, really quick. And so to monitor that, I, I kind of switch between the, the fine side and the uh, rough side. Now here I'm uh, rockering this inside heel because there's a little distortion. Uh, the main thing you want to watch with underrun heels is that those curvature of those heels will actually put you ahead of the dimple, which uh, symbolizes distortion in height. And so you want to straighten and undo the heels by bringing that back and rockering it, not just creating a flat plane with those type of heels. So by rockering the heels, you're able to straighten them and undo the curvature without changing the positive plane of the trim. So now we put our trim to the test. We put the foot on the ground. The horse is standing square. He's looking over to acknowledge us, sort of give us a fist bump uh, with his head and to say thank you. Um, licking, chewing, sighing, yawning are all signs of uh, relief. Uh, the, the expression in their eyes, the soft look they get is also an expression of relief. And so here I am putting the foot on the stand, dressing out any flares because you want to um, look, not only have pride in craftsmanship, but you don't want the, the, the foot to grow distorted and long. So the more um, flares you leave in there, the more you're encouraging that growth to, to travel out further, which creates a lot of leverage and distortion and looks really crappy in, in all honesty. Hey, aloha. So I'm just going to make some uh, mo a modification to these cake shoes with clips. Uh, this horse lives out in the pasture. So um, I want to make sure the these shoes hold. Um, having the breakover set in the right spot as well as having some clips have given me the highest rate of success for keeping shoes on in the pasture. So um, I'm just going to outline what, what, I, what I'm going to do, what kind of modifications. It's just a simple road toe. 
um, I'm gonna hammer into the, the front half of this shoe. Um, so here we go. So here I am, the shoe all nice and hot and malleable. I'm just making consistent, repeated, controlled hammer blows on the toe end of my shoe, creating a nice roll so this horse can feel amazing. I'm also holding back with my tongue hands and going back and forth, keeping that shoe flat. So um, I'm speeding it up because, uh, you know, it's very painful to watch me on the anvil uh, for, uh, you know, a couple of minutes. Uh, we, we need to get going with this lesson. So I took a good mental picture of what the foot looks like, and I'm transferring that to the anvil and using my hammer and my tongs to sort of paint the picture, so to say, and, and make a nice, nice shape of the horse's foot so this horse can feel amazing. So here we are, I'm gonna burn the shoe on. I'm gonna make sure the center of my shoe is lined up with the center of my foot, which is the center of rotation, so your, your horse can operate in equilibrium. But not only that, I'm watching where the breakover of my shoe comes back to, making sure it's in the proper spot. Now here I am just putting a nice finished bevel to the edge of the shoes, so this horse can, you know, avoid getting corners stuck in the ground basically um you know you don't want to create leverage that way as well so here's a modified um shoe i made a uh, a row toe at at the front end of the shoe to line up with the horse's break over on its foot so right here is basically where you want the horse to break over right there and so i'm gonna line that that row toe up oh sorry basically right there so you see a little bit of toe hanging off so if I set that shoe to the front of the toe, then this horse will not break over and travel properly. So you want the break, the roll actually starts right here, which is basically um, right in line with your center of articulation, basically 50, 50, or, you know, add, add or give, give or take a little, and that'll make the horse feel amazing. So this is the finished product right here. You can see um, this horse no longer has a long distorted toe. It still has somewhat low heels, but um, you know, this, this horse still looks amazing. And this is what shoeing around the center of rotation um, looks like. So you can see the heels right here are, are in a pretty good spot. You know, there's, there's some overloading and some shearing here, but um, that, that'll help um, That'll get better with time as we minimize leverage and height on this side of the foot. So earlier, the, this this side of the heel was um, more had more curvature, which meant more length. You could also see from the curvature in that bar as well. But this is basically the center of your uh, center of rotation right here, the stick back line. This is where the breakover starts right here. It's about an inch back from the tip of the toe, and you know if you continue to to shoe the horse to the tip of the toe. Um, the horse, in, you know, this particular foot, um, the horse will will not break over break over properly, and um, uh, feel amazing and stimulate more hoof growth. So you know, right here we we figured out our vertical depth by finding the true apex of our frog. So basically, the front half is basically in proportion to the to the caudal or back half right here, and that in and of itself. That in and of itself, you know, shooting around the center of rotation, getting your your ratios uh, pretty much proportionate. You want your, your, your front half to be equal to your, your, your caudal or your back half. And, you you know, that'll create more hemodynamics uh, more and stimulate more hoof growth because the horse um, is operating in, in, in um, a maximal capacity and which means, you know, leverage is not being applied to the internal structures of your horse's feet, you know, therefore, you know, creating um, more blood flow because it's no longer restricted. So anytime you have long over leveraged toes, it becomes leverage, which causes, you know, blood restriction. And, you know, you, you get long, flat feet um, 
continuously so if you learn how to undo that um by trimming correctly minimizing distortion um and shooting around the center of rotation you'll basically have uh you prevent so many problems navicular disease coffin joint arthritis and the list goes on and on and on and on so um that's basically what went down with this horse um watch and re-watch this video if uh if you have some some misunderstanding and also message me on on youtube uh you know send send a uh, comment on the video and i'll try to reply as quick as i can so peace aloha god bless take care this is brendan kanakole the pretty horseshoe signing off saying aloha